Hey everybody, today I'm going to be discussing Stephen King's legendary 1986 novel, It, and showing what to look for when trying to identify first U.S. and first U.K. editions of the novel. The first U.S. edition was published by Viking. There's the front cover and spine and the back cover. Stephen King rocking out with his guitar. Look for a price inside the jacket flap of $22.95. Look for gray end papers. I have seen some book club editions of it that had white end papers. They look very similar otherwise, but they have white end papers. The first should have gray end papers. And on the copyright page, look for the language first published in 1986 by Viking Penguin Incorporated. There were actually five printings done of the first edition to meet bookseller demand before the book was actually officially released. This is the language on a first printing. Subsequent printings will say second printing, third printing, so forth, uh, so on and so forth, um, right in this area. But the first printing was 400,000 copies. It was the largest printing of all five and combined it brought the total up to 800,000 copies released on um, publication date. This copy is one of the crown jewels of my collection. It's in great shape, except for that. Janice Riddle, you stamped my beautiful copy of it. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was your copy when you stamped it, but still, why do people do stuff like this? It appears from the qu the quality of this book that Janice probably never even read it, but yet she felt the need to stamp it. Don't do that, guys. Own the book, treasure the book, but you don't have to stamp it. You don't have to stamp or write your name in it. Anyway, under the jacket, look for gray boards, black cloth over the spine, Red lettering, very ominous, very sinister, and SK's initials imprinted into the front cover and colored in red foil. Very ominous, very sinister look to this book, and it's an absolute classic. The first UK edition has a very different and distinctive, but pretty badass cover art there's the front cover, the spine. It was published by Hotter and Stoughton. And there's the back cover image, uh, same picture that was used on the back cover of the US edition. Inside the jacket, look for a price of £12.95, net in the UK. And on the copyright page, I want to look for the language first printed 1986. Subsequent printings will um, indicate that here in this uh, area of text. But the first printing says first printed 1986. Underneath the jacket, very common for UK editions. It's black, single color all the way around. Um, this one obviously has some staining and stuff. Not too bad. Black boards, gold lettering on the spine. So that is the UK first edition. I did want to take a minute to give a shout out to US publishers, even major publishers major commercial publishers, um, as I've been going through my Stephen King collecting journey, uh, I, it has become very apparent to me that U.S. publishers used a higher quality uh, acid-free paper stock, as this book is um, now over 35 years old, and the paper is still fresh and white-looking. The UK edition, which is very common 
for UK editions of this vintage uh, just wasn't printed on as high of quality paper. And I would venture to guess that when it was first released, it looked like this, but after 35 years, um, the paper is just, it's still supple. It's not brittle. I don't worry that handling the pages is going to crack them or tear them, but it is obvious that it is of a um, subpar quality and hasn't held up as well as the US edition. And this is pretty par for the course for UK editions. I don't know why, but there you have it. It's just life, life with these books. They just look a little bit different and a little bit worse for the wear. I wanted to take a minute and give a shout out to the case maker, who is not only the maker of these cases, it's also literally known as the case maker. Case maker has a website. Um, these boxes are not cheap. I've I've seen uh, boxes that are custom made and go for hundreds of dollars, and these are not that expensive. Um, they're well under a hundred dollars, but for a valuable book, one that you treasure. They look really sharp. I think the core is wood. Um, the inside is lined with felt and the color scheme matches the color scheme of the book jacket artwork, which is reprinted and replicated on the outside of the box, which I love. I think it's a really nice touch. Um, the U.S. edition box was available on the site. Um, didn't have the U.K. one. He also does uh, custom orders. But when I reached out about getting a box for the U.K. first edition of it, um, the response was it was one that he already wanted and had planned to put um, in his catalog. So he asked me for the dimensions and just charged me the regular price. He didn't charge me a higher price for some sort of a custom job, um, just charged me the regular price, which I thought was really nice, and produced this thing that just looks really sharp. So anyway, I'll put the link uh, in the description to the video, but it is one of my top, um, top three Stephen King, and I was able to acquire the books at really, really good prices and it was um, worth it to me to invest in nice cases to keep them looking sharp and protected for years to come. There have been some pretty high profile special editions of it over the years, um, many of which are, or all of which are very valuable and sought after now. I missed the boat on those, although I will talk about them later, but this edition is available now from German Amazon. I ordered my copy directly from German Amazon. I think you can order it um, also from the publisher, but I got mine on Amazon because I could log in with my US Amazon credentials and use all my same information. It was just very convenient. Um, I was a little worried about the quality of shipping. Uh, mine does have a bumped corner, but overall fared, fared not too badly. Um, better than some I saw. But anyway, this is a German language special edition of it. And I just, I loved that cover image and the cutout effect of the title. Um, on the slipcase. It's a, a little bit fragile. There's nothing supporting these pieces, but it's not too bad. I have it face out on my shelf and I like the way it looks. I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I do not speak German. I do not read German, um, but I do love and collect Stephen King. This is my first foreign language edition. And overall, pretty pleased with it. The case 
is just, um, it's book board, basically. It's decent. It's lined with, lined with more, um, book board. Like a thick, nice quality cardboard case. Looks pretty decent. Um, the book itself is covered in cloth. It's got cloth boards, printed balloon on the back. Um, this really, really creepy and cool image of Pennywise printed on the front. Sprayed red edges all the way around. A ribbon bookmarker, which is really handy for me considering that I don't speak German, so I won't ever, <laughs> I won't ever actually read this book. Um, there's an art print that comes inserted, which is pretty cool. Also, a copy of the Dairy News, which is really authentic looking, um, except for the fact that it's printed in German, which the actual Dairy newspaper probably was not. Anyway, they include the newspaper because in the back of the book, they also include instructions. This is printed into the book itself. They include instructions for how to uh, fold the newspaper and turn it into uh, the SS Georgie from the book. You can make your own copy, but um, I doubt that I will do that. Maybe I will at some point. Um, the ad, the publicity for this book referred to this uh, very explicitly as the gimmick. And I think that's kind of funny, kind of cool that it's presented as a gimmick because it is really gimmicky. And um, it would have been kind of nice if the instructions for making the paper boat were just laid in on a card and not actually printed inside the book itself because it is pretty dang gimmicky. But that's okay. It's also unique. Um, the, as you can see, extremely high page count, higher than the original U.S. edition. It's almost 1,350 pages, and the paper is like, kind of reminds me of Bible paper, kind of that like onion paper where you can, each layer you can see through. And the text comes through clear enough, but it is incredibly thin. But that is all right. And it is not profusely illustrated on the inside. However, it is illustrated, which is a nice touch. The illustrations are pretty cool. So yeah, anyway, that is the current German language limited edition release of it or s. I don't know for sure um, how many copies are in this, but I think it's um, 10,000 or more. So this book will probably be available for a while um, at list price of well, around $75. So it's a, a decent deal in terms of a special edition of one of Stephen King's most famous books. And I mean, that cover is worth the price of admission, in my opinion. Super cool. Bit of a curious uh, bit of trivia about it. Back in 1986, um, there was a another German language edition, a German um, bootleg edition published in 250 copies. And it was um, not signed by Stephen King. It was not condoned by Stephen King, um, but it, it is um, quite a rare item and valuable and sought after in spite of its bootleg status, or maybe even because of its bootleg status. It's hard to find. It was also um, like the current German language version, um, simply entitled S-E-S -E and printed um, in black leather uh, boards with the title in red on the cover. It's pretty distinctive, pretty interesting. Uh, the 
the big one, the big boy, the 35th anniversary edition, um, or the 20, 25th anniversary edition, I apologies, of it was published by Cemetery Dance um, in 2011 in 52 lettered copies signed by Stephen King, 750 numbered copies signed by Stephen King, and 2,750 gift edition copies not signed by Stephen King. This, um, it just, it kills me that I wasn't in, I wasn't collecting, I, I wasn't aware of this back in 2011 when it came out because um, this book, the gift edition specifically, retailed for $125 and today um, commonly sells for 10 times that much. I'm not even kidding, 1200 bucks um, or even more. If you find a copy for less than $1,000, it's considered a really good deal. Um, but 125 bucks um, when it was first released, I guess it took so, so long for this book to sell out that Cemetery Dance was actually um, offering it at a deep discount, um, up to half off. So please, please, somebody buy these books. It was just taking so long. And now, as far as gift editions go, it is probably the most expensive, the most um, sought after gift edition of them all. Um, that was the 25th anniversary released by Cemetery Dance. I was really hoping that somebody would do a 35th anniversary something related to it in 2021, but alas, it did not come to pass. Um, many Stephen King titles have not been done at all in limited editions. Several have been done um, more than once. So I thought it might be possible, but of course the people that were lucky enough or savvy enough to acquire the Cemetery Dance Edition, um, it would potentially detract the value of their books to have another limited edition release. So the idea when I presented, on, presented it on various forums of maybe there'll be a 35th anniversary edition, a lot of people were like, hell no, um, that, that can't happen, that just can't happen. And in fact, it did not happen. But 2031, 2036, 45th anniversary, 50th anniversary of perhaps um, the most famous and popular title by one of the most famous and popular novelists of the last 50 years, um, the 50th anniversary will be something big uh, to celebrate. So anyway, those are the limited editions, really interesting, really cool books, um, worth at least looking up if you're not familiar with them. And if you've got deep pockets, I mean, go ahead and, and pick one up. The um, gift edition has appreciated 10 times uh, since its original um, original list price and the numbered is incredibly valuable and the lettered of, of course was the most expensive to purchase in the first place but is also an incredibly valuable item um, huge book seven by ten inch trim and the lettered was uh, released in a huge box with um, oh the bells and whistles and when I've seen uh, pictures of people holding this thing, I mean, it's like, it's huge. It's huge. Um, it's really cool. Uh, definitely a grail and would be probably the first thing that I would go for if I, if I had won the billion dollar Powerball um, lottery recently, I, I would have, you know, paid off, paid off some debt, um, maybe sent my mom on a cruise and, uh, bought a lettered edition of it but the dream remains alive anyway those are the limited editions when i first read the stand the complete and uncut edition in college i thought it was the the greatest thing i'd ever read and it was the it was my favorite book and if people ask me what's your favorite book i would always say the stand and um, that held true for a long time. Um, but actually, um, 
I never read it until I learned about the recent movies that were being produced and the buzz started to pick up and I wanted to watch the movies and I know that that's um, kind of a shameful thing to admit that I only read Stephen King's um, arguably most famous novel because I was anticipating watching a movie um, of the book but in Stephen King's case I think that might not be so shameful because his fortunes are inextricably linked with the movies um, ever since the release of Carrie in 1976. But regardless, uh, 2016, early 2017, uh, I finally took the plunge and read it. I'd been familiar with it. I had owned it. I'd had, I'd, I had owned it. I was familiar with it. I had had a copy in my collection for a long time and just was intimidated by the sheer length, the size of the book. Um, I was found the idea of reading another epic novel um, similar in scope to The Stand, which I, I thought it must be, because, I mean, how else could you fill all those pages unless you just had a huge cast of characters and all this stuff that goes on, all this stuff that happens. Um, and I, what I wasn't expecting was sort of the, it's epic, it's, it's huge, it, it jumps between timelines, which is really cool, um, but it's relatively intimate, um, just has a core group of characters that it follows, and, and a bunch of secondary characters, but really at the heart, um, at the heart of everything was the the relationship of the Losers Club. And like so many people who have read the novel, I immediately identified with the Losers, um, with Ben in particular, um, as a chonky boy, myself, um, a husky kid, and also sort of a romantic, I, I felt for, Ben and his his plight um, very much and Stephen King goes so deep um, with these characters and with their experiences that I just found myself enthralled I I think that Pennywise in his clown incarnation is of course iconic and thanks to the movies um, is even more iconic. Bill Skarsgård did a great job, but to me, Tim Curry will always be my go-to number one Pennywise, um, as a whole generation of kids, um, right along with me, was traumatized by watching the miniseries when it first aired um, in the early 90s. That oh, still gives me the shivers today to think about it. Um, but anyway, the, the stand um, had so many characters and Stephen King, he did so much introducing, telling the little almost thumbnail sketch stories of all of these characters. But while I was enthralled by the story and overwhelmed by the scope and the accomplishment of what he had done, um, it is a much deeper and more satisfying experience, in my opinion, because he narrows the focus and really just focuses in on this core group and has um, the, the set pieces in the book, uh, particularly the opening scene with the, the paper boat and the sewer are just burned into our common pop culture consciousness and in a way that's truly remarkable. Uh, Stephen King is a phenomenon and it is arguably, maybe debatably, his um, greatest achievement and one of the greatest achievements at least um, of his classic period, which I think is generally considered about the first 15 years of his career uh, from Carrie to the very late 80s 
when he crashed and burned with his addiction problems and then sort of picked himself up and and moved on to the next phase um, in the 90s, which are classic works, many classic works um, in that era too. But it feels like to me in the classic period, everything was kind of building up to it. And it's a climax and a summation of the classic period of Stephen King's um, career. And I found both of my copies um, in the wild, the UK edition, it has it has a few condition issues, but um, gotta love that, love that cover image. It's so different than the U.S., but uh, so vital in its own right and creepy, and I I just love the U.S. one is so minimalist and so understated, and it's really creepy and classic in its own right. But this one, I just love the warmer colors. I love the more complex imagery um, really speaks to the novel and draws you in. Although it, in a way, it's almost too cartoony, a little too over the top. The U.S. edition, minimal, iconic. You know, what the heck is going on here? But the perfect uh, blend of innocence and malevolence and then, of course, the, the simple title, Stephen King's longest novel, or one, one of his longest novels, The Uncut Stand, I think, was a little bit longer. But this thing is huge. And to be so huge and to have such a short title, just two letters, even when I was a kid, and I understood that this was like the granddaddy of all Stephen King books, um, the just... It. What the heck does that mean? It. It's two letters. Um, it was just, even the title is scary. <laughs> I don't know how a two-letter word could be scary, but it's the way it's printed on the cover, or I don't know. Anyway, I'm gushing. Um, I'm totally geeking out over this. I've been looking forward, going in chronological order through my collection, and I've been looking forward to doing the It video. Um, because I, it, I think, um, if I had to at least pick my top two, it would be It and The Shining. And I think The Shining has the edge, but sometimes it's just a case of what's, which one have you read most recently? And my, I recently, just in the last year or so, reread the Shining and found things in it that um, I totally went over my head when I first read it as a teenager. So as of right now, The Shining edges out it for the top spot. But if I make my way through it again, I'm sure that it will regain um, the spot at the top of the heap. But anyway, I'm rambling. I, I love this book. And I could probably keep rambling about it, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this video. So thank you, as always, for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.